Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explore the different types of triangles that we're going to see this year in geometry, and I'm going to classify those triangles by sides, and I'm going to classify them by their angles. So we're going to get a whole bunch of definitions here with some diagrams, um, and we'll go through these one at a time. Scalene. So classifying by sides, I'm going to start with scalene. Scalene is a type of triangle in which no sides are congruent. So a scalene triangle, if I have tick marks, you know, might look something like that. So none of the sides are congruent. An isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle, is a triangle in which at least two sides are congruent. So an isosceles triangle might look something like that, with two of the sides congruent, at least two sides congruent. And these two congruent sides are referred to as the legs. So those two sides would be the legs, and then the non-congruent side, we would call that the base. And that's not always going to be the bottom. So don't be fooled by that just because it's on the bottom right now. And the angle that's opposite the base is going to be your vertex angle. Okay, so in this case, in triangle ABC, angle A would be the vertex angle. And again, keep in mind the base is not always the bottom. And then third is an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle then is a triangle when it, in which all the sides are congruent. So an equilateral triangle is also considered an isosceles triangle because isosceles has at least two sides congruent and equilateral has two sides congruent. In fact, it has all three. So this is also considered isosceles. And that's going to be important. You're going to see that this is going to lead to all sorts of sometimes, always, never questions. We can also classify the triangles by their angles. So there will be some overlap here. An acute triangle is a triangle in which all the angles are acute or all the angles are less than 90 degrees. So, so the angles would be less than 90 all three of them. And an acute angle might be equilateral, it might be isosceles, and it might be scalene. We don't know, but it could be any one of those things. But classifying by its angles, it's just acute, so all the angles are less than 90. A right triangle is a triangle in which one angle is right, or 90 degrees. So if I have a right triangle, I've got at least one right angle. And that's all I can have. But I've got one right angle, and the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Okay, and the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and it will be the longest side of the right triangle. The hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side. And the other two sides are going to be the legs. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that those, ang those sides are congruent. They certainly could be different lengths, but we do call those the legs. They could be congruent, and then we'd have an isosceles right triangle. It'd have two congruent sides and a right angle, so we could mix and match our classifications with both by sides and angles and refer to one with congruent legs and isosceles, right, triangle. And the third kind is an obtuse triangle, and that's a triangle with one obtuse angle. And that could be look like just about anything, but that means one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees. So it's possible that this angle here could be greater 
spin 90 degrees, and that would make that an obtuse triangle. And again, obtuse triangles uh, can also be isosceles, uh, they can be scalene, they can't be equilateral. No, an obtuse triangle won't be equilateral because equilateral is only equiangular, and that's a triangle with three congruent angles. So all those angles would be congruent. So it turns out they'll all be 60 degrees. And an equiangular triangle is also equilateral. Its sides will be congruent. And as I mentioned, this leads to plenty of sometimes always never questions. Kind of alluded to that. Okay, if a triangle is equiangular, can it be obtuse? Uh, sometimes always never that kind of thing. So um, understand your properties of those different triangles and you'll be forced to make connections between them and, and look at some of those properties. Let's take a look at a sample proof after we've classified our triangles. Let's take a look. So let's look at this particular proof. We're given that JF is congruent to JG. So we've got our diagram here. We'll see quite a bit of this. And F and G trisect EH. So F and G are trisectors. So EF and GH and FG are all congruent. And we want to prove triangle EHJ is isosceles. Well, how would we know that this is going to be isosceles? Well, if we can get two sides congruent, then we'll know it's isosceles. So our second last step, if we work from the bottom, okay, will be getting two congruent sides. So EHJ, so the whole big triangle will be isosceles if we can get EJ congruent to JH. If we can do that, we've got an isosceles triangle. So that actually is going to be our second last step in our proof. So working from the bottom, our last step, of course, will be the triangle EHJ is isosceles. And our second last step will be that segment EJ is congruent to segment JH. Because once we get that, then we'll have isosceles. We won't have to do any more. Well, how are we going to get those congruent? Well, you guessed it. We'll probably have to prove those two triangles congruent. And it appears that we are well on our way here with congruent sides. Okay, so let's go back. Let's work our way down. We know we're going to have to prove one triangle congruent to another triangle. And then we'll use CPCTC, and then we'll have isosceles. So let's go back to the beginning here. F and G trisect EH. Um, that's one of our givens. So in step three, then, we know that segment EF is congruent to segment GH. And that's all we're going to really need. We're not going to use FG in this particular proof. So our definition of a trisector says... Trisector divides a segment into three congruent segments. So if we have a trisector, we have congruent segments. Then we have angle EFJ is congruent to HGJ. And this works great. We've got our triangles on the left and right congruent by side angle side. So we have triangle, I'll have to be careful with my correspondence here. I'm going to call it triangle JEF, the one on the left hand side, is congruent to triangle JHG. I've got my correct correspondence. My steps are steps 1, 3, and 4. And then in step 6, we know EJ is congruent to JH. 
because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then we know our triangle is isosceles. So we got that is congruent to that by CPCTC. So now I know my big triangle here is isosceles because if at least two sides of a triangle are congruent, then it is isosceles. So there's a good sample proof of proving something isosceles. We learned about properties of triangles. We classified them by their angles. We classified them by their sides. So you'll have to learn those properties. Commit that to memory. And we'll practice this more when I see you in class.